right, welcome back to Markets at Noon. Let's keep the conversation going. And we have a management joining us on the show to give us a better sense of where the business is heading. We have Mr. Adipali Krishna Sai Kumar, the whole time director at Apollo Microsystems, joining us uh, on the show on the back of the recent update that they've received. Mr. Kumar, good afternoon and thank you so much for your time. You've received a new defense manufacturing license from DPIIT. What does this approval unlock for your company in terms of new opportunities with the Ministry of Defense? Yeah, good afternoon. Um, uh, so these, uh, uh, there is a mandate uh, for certain uh, type of systems that are supplied to the Ministry of Defense. Um, and, you know, we stipulated, uh, um, you know, uh, for which, you know, we have applied for this license for manufacturing these items. And, um, you know, we have received it, you know, out of which, you know, initial navigation systems, uh, 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 different variants of it, you know, currently, you know, are under development. And we have already ordered the, uh, you know, calibration and test facilities for that, uh, you know, these equipment. And we'll be rolling out uh, uh, these products in the INS side in the uh, next financial year, which will be uh, used across uh, different platforms, including the uh, missiles, um, torpedoes, and various other uh, underwater platforms, and uh, also avionic platforms, actually. And uh, coming back to the other things, like, you know, we also received it for the radar and uh, other allied equipment. And uh, also we will, the current, uh, you know, the unmanned systems uh, that we are uh, developing for the logistic and some of which for the attack application and uh, aerial drop drone applications, you know, for which, you know, uh, uh, the current development is going on. Uh, I think, uh, you know, for that also it will be. So if there's a mandate requirement that, you know, the companies who manufacture this and supply to Ministry of Defense, they need to be approved by DPIT and licenses mandatory. So uh, we have received it, you know, um, yesterday. And we have given a discussion for that. Okay, Mr. Kumar, afternoon, Ashesha, this side. So that's as far as uh, your defense license is concerned. But I want to understand it's a completely new segment uh, that you're entering into, right? As far as defense manufacturing is concerned. Then what kind of synergetic gains do you expect to enjoy in uh, 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 with regards to your current business as well? No, navigation systems are certain things that we are currently already doing. But the specific INS sensors, you know, we are actually, you know, sourcing it from, you know, other uh, companies actually. But these are, these are certain sensors currently DRDO is all, all, all also developing and certain sensors we are importing from various locations. And uh, now we wanted to, you know, uh, develop it in-house and test and calibrate in-house for captive requirement. It's a uh, large, fairly large addressable opportunity of, uh, you know, uh, thousands of crores uh, across different platforms. Okay, and uh, also help us understand that you now have approval to manufacture unmanned helicopters and UAV platforms. What specific use cases are you going to be targeting? Uh, is it going to be more on the surveillance side of things? Is it more logistics? So primarily, you know, uh, these uh, uh, you know platforms we are developing for uh, some of the projects where we have developed aerial bombs. Uh, we have multiple variants of aerial bombs uh, which are developed uh, along with the DRDO, um, you know, up to 25 kgs, you know, uh, more than eight to nine variants. So um, one is for the, you know, a drop in, a dropping of the aerial bombs, you know, this, uh, you know, unmanned system will be used. And also for other critical uh, logistic uh, uh, applications to start with, as far as the logistic uh, point of view and uh, attack drone point of view is concerned. And when will you actually start supplying and manufacturing this? When will this reflect in your financials then? Uh, already we have some orders. Uh, I think the, the fundamentally trials will start from uh, next, uh, you know, I think one quarter onwards. I think a couple of months to one quarter onwards. And, you know, the revenue it will start kicking it from the next financial year. Okay, and since this is a long-term validity license that you've received, a 15-year period, um, help us understand how do you see this transforming your company's long-term defense manufacturing roadmap? Um, first thing is that, you know, one is that it's a mandatory thing that, you know, we, ne we need to hold a license when it goes in for a manufacturing so that, you know, now that we have obtained, you know, we are now it's fully uh, set to go. And um, there are other stipulations like, you know, when we are trying to collaborate with some international companies, you know, both for supplies as well as for, you know, uh, uh, contract manufacturing of their systems, you know, uh, this is something that, that would be helpful for us to get into a collaborative approach as well. 
Okay, and since you are telling us that it will get reflected in your financials next year onwards, which is FY27, how much revenue uptake could we see incrementally on account of this license that you have received? Um, certain systems, you know, that we are presently importing, you know, we will stop importing them and I think we'll start using the capital requirements going forward. May not be from the next financial year, but from the next half of financial year for the national navigation system side. But uh, specifically for the logistic application, this will be for some of the capital requirements and the, you know, overall, um, you know, logistic and aerial bomb, uh, you know, drop drone applications. Uh, the opportunity size is increasing and, you know, we will be addressing that market as well. And the size of opportunities are pretty large. But TAM itself is uh, more than 10,000 to 15,000 crore for this, uh, you know, uh, logistic as well as, you know, uh, you know, kamikaze and other applications. Um, we are trying to attempt, you know, certain type of, you know, applications we are trying to attempt. And this is not specifically for the ISR purpose alone. Okay, and since you are telling us that this uh, manufacturing will replace imports and then you will manufacture it in-house, it will, I understand, aid margins, right? Absolutely, yeah. And so in this, uh, in this unmanned system, right from the propulsion system, which is right from the motor, you know, to all the avionics inside it, including the, you know, the payloads, everything will be fully indigenously, you know, developed. Okay, so where do you see your uh, margins and spreads headed going forward in that case? No, our current business, uh, you know, is not purely uh, based on, you know, this upcoming requirements, actually. These are all futuristic, actually. But, you know, whatever the guidance that we have given earlier, you know, it will continue to be the same. But these are some additional things, you know, that we will be adding to our PT for the next future uh, financial years, from starting from next financial year onwards to a certain extent. Okay, so Mr. Kumar, if you could help us understand what kind of announcements we, uh, we can hear from the company in the near to medium term, since you said that this is a significant TAM that you want to tap into. Yeah, apparently also we are discussing with, uh, you know, different companies, you know, particularly, for example, this kind of sensors in the initial side that we develop, you know, we would also be supplying to other private and government agencies, individually as a sensors as well, national navigation systems. Secondly, apart from that, you know, um, we have been talking about, you know, our other initiatives in terms of the explosive side also. That also we are going aggressive. Uh, we have earlier uh, informed uh, to the markets that we are developing uh, the Grand Rockets 122 mm version. Um, and you now um, the guidance system for the Grand as well, you know, uh, you know, in-house development started for which the sensors will also be used actually. And the size of the business opportunity is also uh, very, very high. And some um, guidance systems for the artillery applications also, you know, we would be doing with this uh, in-house, uh, you know, navigation system getting ready. Um, uh, as we have uh, earlier also informed that, you know, um, the, for the guidance kit for the Pinaka, you know, application also weapon, uh, we have developed, uh, you know, this is the DIDO project. But there are other applications, you know, where the guidance systems will be developed by us, where the sensors, you know, certain sensors we were importing. But now, you know, the complete navigation system, we don't need to import, you know, it can be developed in-house, uh, um, you know, for our captive, you know, upcoming uh, rocket programs. Okay, and the opportunity size is quite huge. That's the word coming in. Mr. Kumar, thank you so much for taking your time out and joining us here on ET Now and helping us understand what this license actually means that you've received with respect to defense manufacturing. Thanks so much for joining us today. On that note, we need to slip into a very short break, but more news and updates will continue on the other side. Don't go anywhere.